Welcome back everyone to yet another episode and in today's video we'll be taking a look at a very special pair of loafers from Paolo Scafora. Coming up! How is going everyone? We're back with another video and another pair of shoes and uh, actually another pair of loafers which is quite unusual for me because it's generally not my style but since I moved in Italy as you can see it's way too hot here I really needed to upgrade my sort of more casual or summer wardrobe I want better than a pair of loafers however I'm not a big fan of penny loafers or standard tassel loafers so I wanted something more unique and when you want something unique the only place to look at is through Paolo Scafora. You're guaranteed to find something unique. Uh, specifically, we'll be looking at uh, a pair of uh, what's called the 774 art, uh, or like art number from Paolo Scafora uh, in a hand welted and hand lacked construction in the color Antiquate Vietri, which I like very, very much. Now, the problem is I don't really know how to call this model because it's part loafer, butterfly loafer, part monk strap, part a pronto we'll find a nice name eventually anyways I was waiting for this for uh, at least three months it came just in time to enjoy in the summer and uh, what we're going to do today is of course talk about it uh, go through a nice close-up and discuss all the details then talk about availability pricing sizing and anything else related to this pair of shoes so let's go in the close-up and I'll see you soon so here we are with a close-up and we're just gonna go straight right into it. As you see, these loafers are stunning, unique and really, really pleasant to look at. And we're gonna talk all about them. First of all, let's talk about what they are, because even I haven't figured that out. There are a lot of elements that the shoe has that you could categorize it as something else. But I think that we can all agree that these are loafers because they are actually shaped as a loafer and there are slip-ons. Uh, then they have what we call in the industry sort of a butterfly strap. So it's not exactly as a penny loafer and it's like a crisscross. And then you have a decorative mostly strap that is uh, reminiscent of an actual monk strap. I mean, you can actually remove it and you can change the shape a bit here for some extra space. And then you've got an apron toe, which is just an apron. It's not a split toe, so there is no split here. So let's just call them a nice pair of loafers for now until I come up with a better idea. And uh, these loafers, uh, they have a very nice sleek design. Like just look at the profile, how low they are. Uh, very, very lovely. And of course, they also have a very nice almond chiseled uh, last which is called the vola v-o-l-a and you can see it from the bottom i've already installed the uh, metal tote via scaphora and of course you can see the gorgeous unique embossed logo that comes with uh, their own leather sole uh, as far as the color this is a sort of a dark brown with some very very slight hints of uh, a bit more reddish or burgundy that you can see mostly in the sun and it's called Antiquid Vietri. And I, I also have this in my shop uh, in the double monk boots. It's the same color. So I was very familiar with it. And I knew that uh, when I commissioned these loafers that these would look great in it. And uh, it has a very, very nice low profile right here. I really like it. Slightly burnished, very aggressive toe. And of course, these shoes, as you will notice, even though they are from Paolo Scafora, uh, they are well, from what they call the Goodyear range. Uh, actually, they call it Goodyear by hand, which is a bit misleading because this is welted by hand. It's hand welted and it's also hand lasted with a machine stitched sole. Uh, very lovely, as you can see at the bottom. It's always a work of art. I almost don't want to walk on it. And of course, the insole is also written by hand and it has uh, some personalization. Uh, right now, it talks about me and like uh, made uh, by hand for the Noble Shoe, for example. Overall, it's a lovely pair of shoes. There's not so much to say. I mean, the stitching is, as always, as I expected, this price point impeccable. Uh, actually, the the buckles uh, and the, the materials that they use for the straps 
they are very high quality and they have quite a bit of weight on them. Uh, it's actually pretty great and I've only seen Stefano Bemmer use such high quality and high weight and density uh, straps and buckles. Very, very lovely. I like the shape. Stitching impeccable everywhere. There's nothing that I can find uh, that I could say it's a uh, subpar or I'm not happy with it. Um, you can not really see the weld join is done very, very well. And it's a great shoe. Uh, I, I look very forward to actually wearing it. You can even see the hand welded bumps around the insole, uh, which is actually lovely. And that's about it. Uh, because of the nature of the shoe, there's not much stitching. Uh, this is only the apron, which is expertly done and uh, erased. There is a bit of around the buckles, uh, of course, here around uh, the uh, lining. And of course, a very, very nice straight back seam. Uh, very well done, nothing to say. Uh, painting, flawless. Uh, leather quality feels very, very good. I already have the same leather and color in my other shoes, so I know what to expect. And uh, as you will see, they fit me great. So before we move on, I always recommend getting a pair of shoe trees when you buy such high-end shoes. Maybe I will do a video eventually uh, talking about different uh, shoe trees that I found. These ones are remarkable. They have a very nice handle and grip. Uh, very, very easy, very ergonomic. Uh, of course, they have a spring mechanism, works really well. Most importantly, uh, other than the fact that they're really nice to touch, they are hollowed, so they're quite lightweight. Actually, I, I cannot stress how lightweight they are. Like, you can lift them with a couple of fingers. Uh, it's just a few grams. And when you put them into the shoe, I mean, makes it look even better and it just works perfectly. Lasted, uh, cams included uh, with the actual price as you will see. So let me show you one last time because these are really beautiful to look at from both the top and the side and of course the profile. And enjoy them for a few more seconds and then we move on. And that was the close up. Paolo Scafari is simply my favorite or one of my top three favorite shoemakers in the world, partly because of the quality, partly because they fit me well, and also because when you take a look at a pair of Paolo Scafari shoes, you know it's him. It has a very unique, clear identity. Whether you look at the beautiful sole work, where it's instantly, you know, you can understand who, it made, who made this, or the Norwegian construction, not on this pair at least, or even the logo on the shoe trees, and generally some of the designs, very Neapolitan, very Mediterranean, very Italian. I like that very much. So this particular model, we discuss what it is and the overall qualities that it has and the overall details. So let's get going and start talking about the other important stuff. Uh, availability, Paolo Scafford doesn't have many retailers around the world. Uh, you can just go through them directly through their website or you can commission this, which is a made to order or an MTO through the Noble Shoe. Uh, my company, I am also an official retailer of them with a very limited curated stock, but I can also get anything you want via made to order. And this is what this was. It was actually a group made to order and you could get it for about 1,300 euros. Uh, it's a little less than usual because of the construction and Right now that you're watching this video, this could be anywhere from 1.3 to 1.4 thousand dollars USD due to the exchange rates. So that is about the ballpark you should expect this particular model with this construction, but of course also all the goodies included. So the metal toe tips and the lasted shoe trees, which honestly are a must at this price point. And uh, that's pretty much availability and pricing. Now, most importantly, we're gonna talk also about the fit. And this model, uh, along many others that Paolo Scafra has, is on the Vola Last, which I find very spacious, it's definitely roomy, and I also find it to be a very good fit. And for this one, I generally recommend sizing down half a size from your regular UK or one and a half from your regular US. So, for example, I'm usually a UK 8 in your standard St. Crispin's, Carmina Rain, Crockett Jones, etc. 
And uh, I'm eight and a half in a bit more narrower less, like Stefano Bemmer or Antonio Macariello or Gaziano and Girling. So my base is an eight. And for this, you should go down to a seven and a half, so half a size down. And if you are a US 9D in, say, Allen Edmonds in the US system, you would go also to a UK seven and a half, so one and a half full sizes down. Of course, if you have a very specific foot uh, or a problem or something you want to discuss, always talk to your retailer or me, for example, uh, directly and ask. Better be safe than sorry. So that's about the fitting. Overall about styling, I mean, this is a loafer. Uh, it can be quite debatable about the formality. Generally, it's not as you know formal as an Oxford. But then again, I live in Italy. During the summer, it's not impossible, but it's not so great to wear Oxfords or boots or other dressy items. And this is a nice low-cut shoe. Uh, loafers are so easy to wear. It's one of the few dress shoes that you can actually wear with, with a pair of shorts, for example. But this is really nice looking, very sleek, great profile, great last, uh, great look, great color, because this is brown, dark brown. It means that you can even wear it with a suit, where it's, it's linen or it's a business suit at some point. So it's very versatile, especially due to the color. There is, There are very few colors that don't match with dark brown. And the only thing I can think right now is black, which you should not wear anyways. And uh, charcoal, very dark gray. They, doesn't, they just don't match very well together. Other than that, we can you can play with pretty much everything. So versatility means that you will get a lot of wear and easy wear out of a pair of these type of shoes and in this color. And I'm going to enjoy wearing these. These are, are my own personal pair. It's the only, the second loafer I own after the Colencourt. And uh, right after this video, I hope to take them out for a spin uh, because I've been just using them in the house just to assess the fit and the comfort and everything. Uh, overall, I found this last to be quite roomy, but very nice, in a very nice way, generous for my toes. Uh, the toe box is just right, and especially the right shoe, where my instep is a bit higher, it can accommodate it just fine. And it's a loafer, so, I mean, the straps are mostly decorative, because they only have one hole. But you know what? Worst case, you can punch a second one and just adjust it a little more if you need a bit of extra space. Very nice shoe, very nice profile. I'm very happy with my purchase because even though I bought these through my company, I actually paid for them. And uh, very excited to have finally a pair from Paolo Scafora that is not Norwegian welted or Norwegian constructed. Um, and to check out the regular hand welted, they call Goodyear range. Uh, I hope you like this very much. This is controversial, but this is one of the best looking loafers I've seen. Very unique. Uh, not as bold as you might think, very lovely to wear, and I will enjoy them very, very much. And uh, that brings us to the end of the video. Of course, if you're new to the channel or you're an older viewer but haven't, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, uh, thumbs up, notifications for uh, the, <laughs> the massive amount of content that I've got coming up. And uh, there are also some guides uh, and some clothing reviews coming along the way in the next few weeks. So, thank you for watching, stay tuned for the bad dad joke of the week, and I'll see you in the next one. So this one is a bit niche, but if you are a Marvel fan, just like me, then you might appreciate or understand it. So, <laughs> which mobile app is Thanos' favorite? Snapchat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that's 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 the worst I had this week. <laughs> oh, great one! I'm very proud of myself. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.